Esteban Ocon at the toughest weekend on Sunday, in which um, he had to retire his car in, in, in the Bahrain Grand Prix in Seca on Sunday. It was, um, it was a weekend you would never forget. Welcome to Exxon F1, also known as Formula One Coulomb Africa. My name is Oshpes Olua Daminare. I'm a mechanic, as you all know. Today, we're talking about Esteban Ocon. You know, like I said, we'll be analyzing the drivers and everything that went down on Sunday in the Saka Grand Prix. It is a whole lot of news that we can, we got to analyze how some of us can know some of the things that is going on based on our analysis. That's why we're breaking it down for you every time. So let's talk about Esteban Ocon, like I said. Esteban Ocon's issue started after the formation lap. Unpacking his car in his spot, he parked outside the painted um, tarmac, the, the painted tarmac in which he's meant to park or to put his car. Now, during the race, he said he has been parking there for seasons and he has not been penalized. But if he can rewind back to last year in um, Interlagos, Brazil, Himself and Lewis were reprimanded by the, FI, by, by, by the Formula One FIA body that. They did the same thing, but the only reason why they were pardoned was because the, the lines on the, on the Interlagos track are not clear enough. So if he has forgotten about um, October last year, the same thing happened. Well, luck ran against him this time. But as the race went on, um, on the first lap, he had a contact with, with another racing driver in which he lost some part of his front wing. Now, instead of a black and orange flag to be thrown for him because some part of that front wing was just flying everywhere on the racetrack, during his first pit stop, he was meant to, to serve a five seconds penalty for parking outside the line. That is his penalty. Five seconds penalty. Now, while he was go going, he knew when he would be going into the pit to change his tires. He will serve the five second penalty. And also, he wants to change the front wing. I don't know what the, 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 the mechanics were thinking about. One of them touched the car just about four tenths before five seconds to start working on the car. So one of them touched the car and it was noted by the FIA. And again, while he was trying to rush out, after the car was fixed, while he was trying to rush out from the pit, there's a particular speed limit that you're meant to adhere to in the pit lane. There's a particular speed limit. You cannot overdrive past that speed limit. But maybe due to his hastiness, he, 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 he went a little bit above that speed limit. That was noticed again. Now, for him not taking the five-second penalty fully, he was awarded another 10-second penalty. A lap later, he was now awarded another five-second penalty for speeding through the pit lane. So he was given 20 seconds penalty, <laughs> which he served. On serving it, he was still at the back of the grid. So they decided to retire the car. Now, Retiring, retiring the car means you will be able to save the engine for the next race in Saudi Arabia, in Deria, Saudi Arabia, on, um, on the 19th of March. Now, 
of all Alpine's high hopes to the weekend. That was why they were the team that, that brought the, the most upgrades down to the first race. Of all their high hopes, everything they were hoping for, they were only able to get two points from Pierre Gasly. Meanwhile, Pierre Gasly started 20th on the grid because his lap time was cancelled <laughs> because he exceeded the track limit. His lap time was cancelled <laughs> before the um, during the, the, the qualifying. I, I, I think it was the Q1, the Q1 on Saturday. Now they had a driver, a friend driver that that he used on Saturday. Another driver had issues on Sunday. They were able, they, they were able to meet, meet, miss out of the maximum points for them. Now, like, 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 like some of us should know, that don't know before, Formula One is a, is a management sport and it's a time sport. Every mistake you make on the path, every mistake you make in the pit, every mistake is counted to count against you. Even while changing tires, every tent you, you, you leave, every tent you don't take account of is going to work against you in Formula One. And um, a lot of mistakes, uh, and we hope Alpine will be able to learn through their mistakes. And coming to Saudi Arabia, it will be a better, a better race for them, we hope. And, and that, that is Esteban, Esteban o, o, Ocon's race on Sunday. His, his race was um, woven with mistakes and mistakes, and um, he was unable to, to do well on Sunday. Thank you for, for following us. Thank you for listening to, to the analysis. We, we bring you more analysis in the next episode. Thank you. At Exxon F1, our main aim is to bring you the knowledge of Formula One, educate you, bring you the, the races, how it goes down, help you to understand it more. On our shots, you'll be seeing some educational terminologies and the words that are, that are used during the race that you might not understand. And our long goal is to bring um, a Formula One race to Africa, um, possibly Nigeria, and also to educate people and to help open the knowledge transfer of getting Nigerians into some part of Formula One, the racing, which will take a long time because um, we need to have good cutting category to the to, to to challenge to get drivers from the cutting categories into the f small small formulas the Renault formulas formula four and other formulas because before we can get a driver to formula one that might take a long time but that is our goal to be the bridge to help people realize their dream in formula one some people may, may not even know that that is where they are meant to be but our own main aim is to help them to navigate and realize that goal and also to to help people to to grow in the engineering the other administrative aspect of the game if possibly a billionaire in nigeria will, 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 want, will want to be will want to buy into the to buy a team in formula one or be one of the sponsors so that they can see how they can see that we have the quality hands that will do it which will also help in aiding how our engineering um, develop as a nation. Because um, with um, people, with young people, young, young graduates or young, young entrepreneurs, young engineers learning the engineering of Formula One, the CFD, the fluid dynamics, and all the parts of Formula One, we'll find ourselves growing in car development because the cars you see today, most of the technologies are, are well tested in Formula One before they become today's technology. And um, if you have people there, it, 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 it will help our technical know-how 
to build good mechanics, good engineers, and then it, it also promotes the revenue generation for a nation. It's part of our dream to, to, to bring cutting, to bring this race to Nigeria and to Africa also, and to help an African, a young Africa, a young African, to help a young African to realize his dream, not just in Formula One, but being an engineer and being part of this world. It will also create a lot of em employment for a lot of people. And this will take a lot of people out of the street. That is our main aim. That is why we have this channel. If there's a way you can support, we'd love you to come on board, work with us. I would love to work with you. Thank you.